lovely to have you back here in sunny side Australia. Yeah, thank you. It's great to be back. Mm. So some time ago we talked about this exhibition of you were currently making these wings mm -hmm. for reeds and then we talked about a group show of you and your friends. Yeah, um, I had made a smaller version of this back in the States uh, at a gallery near my hometown. And so I just elaborated on that some more and added about another 110 uh, bee wings. And these are, uh, uh, what I did first, I took a photograph of a little wing uh, from a bee and then enlarged it and transferred that onto mesh, uh, stainless steel mesh. And a lot of my work has uh, involved mesh over the years in various types, uh, mostly stainless steel, but some copper. And with this here, uh, what inspired me to, uh, as far as a, a insect wing imagery is, I kind of realized I could probably replicate it fairly well in stainless steel. And I like that, uh, I like being able to do that, where you work with a, a hard industrial material, but then to be able to make it you know, very uh, sort of ephemeral and delicate. And so that kind of started a series of work dealing with insect wings. Uh, like I made uh, dragonfly wings and, and various ones. But I kind of got onto this idea of, of, of doing multiples of bee wings and then doing installations out of them. And so this is the largest version I've done uh, so there's uh, 220 wings all together and suspended by monofilament and then I have the pile of wings on the floor. So just to, to make it seem like the, the insects lost their wings and either coming to earth or hovering in space. Uh, so it has this uh, kind of ephemeral, kind of delicate feel to it. So did you have a template that you use for every bee wing and are they identical or how did you well, produce them? Yeah, I mean you could say they're sort of identical but not exactly because they're all, all burned with a torch. So the, the veining in the wing is all burned out uh, using a butane torch. And then there's a lot of kind of variations of that. But uh, the template itself, I just had six actual drawings that I used to transfer it in to the mesh. And after I burn on the imagery, uh, then I uh, apply a uh, gloss acrylic medium to them. Uh, and that creates this kind of, it fills in the gaps of the mesh, because uh, there's all these grids in the mesh. And then it also creates this little bit of a glossy finish, which kind of replicates a bit what a, a look of an insect wing is. You know, they're kind of semi-transparent and, and so that's the look I wanted with these. And then I also, after I applied the, the gloss medium, I cut out the wing and then I would take just a simple tool to create kind of a, a relief on the wing so I can get this kind of curved uh, look. Lenny, was there something about bees? Is uh, what's happened to bees in America an yeah. issue for you, or why? Well, you it's, it, it's, it's part of this whole environmental uh, thing with uh, global warming and overuse of pesticides and all of that. That uh, you know, we all have to be kind of aware of and how we can, you know, what we need to do to, like in this case, to keep our pollinators. I mean, they're they're the creatures that pollinate our or blossoms and stuff to get fruit and vegetables. And so it's just, it's my kind of subtle way, I guess, calling attention to that problem. Uh, the inspiration for me has always been nature in various forms. And, you know, mostly I, I'm very interested in the structures of nature. And with the, the insect wing, i inspired by the, the veining. And so that, so that was kind of my initial interest, but then there's the, the other things that's all kind of tied into that and how artistically to be able to present that uh, for having some, you know, uh, some meaning to it. Um, that calls attention to something greater than, than yourself, so. It's a wonderful install because as the air moves around, you get little 
glimpses of the colours that are created from the burning um, onto the mesh. So it's it's very beautiful. It's very subtle. Yeah, it picks you know, it kind of picks up the light because they all kind of turn a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if there's a little bit of air movement in the room, they kind of gently kind of kind of move and stuff. And I like that quality of the of the work. Mm -hmm. So. And do you want to talk to the process of us co-curating wings and the finding of the other 17 artists who are interested, obviously, in insects and birds and the structures of wings? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, initially I was uh, signed up to do another workshop in Australia and so then I contacted you saying, well, I'm going to be back in Australia again. And so that's what started, you know, me doing a workshop here at Timeless Textiles and also this exhibition. And I think at the time I mentioned that I wanted to do something related to, to wings and insects. I, prob I think I had already thought I'd like to do a more ex expansive uh, installation of this particular work. And so the idea of the exhibition came around that thought that it would have to do with, with wings of some type. Uh, you know, in my case, it was more specific to insects, but, you know, anything that had to do with kind of flight or birds or, you know, anything that had some kind of flying uh, winged element to it was kind of part of the show. And I recommend a few people from the United States that I knew, and you came up with a number of artists that kind of would fit that general thought of what the exhibition could be. It's always exciting to put a range of five artists together using different techniques to see whether they hang together around a common theme. Uh -huh. And I think this show achieves that. I, yeah, I think so, it does too. Yeah. It's really a great combination. We've got some natural materials and some that aren't. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's an exciting exhibition. Lanny, I'm really interested to know where you're progressing with your work. Uh, yeah, uh, I kind of go sort of in series with my work. Um, and right now I'm sort of in my head thinking about after, sort of more after this year, I guess, uh, I'm thinking about doing more structural kind of pieces. Uh, suspended probably and maybe some basketry work but dealing a little bit more with structure and i kind of bounce back and forth sometimes between more structural things and then more natural uh kind of biomorphic kind of work so so right now i'm kind of thinking that might be where i want to go for a while then i'll kind of come back and pick up a, a stream of thought from you know, earlier series that I did. And so this year's been a busy year with um, after this in October I have a show in Philadelphia. And so I've had like to really buckle down and do a, a lot of work up until that point. And so it'll give me some a little more freedom to explore some other interests of mine with the sort of more structural stuff. So other than the uh, bees wings you've also put in uh, a basket that is what you were just speaking of yeah would you like to just talk to this little basket that you've got yeah this uh, piece is made out of stainless steel mesh and what i do i i do a drawing on paper with what the imagery will be on the mesh and then I transfer that uh, with a sharpie to the mesh, and then I burn out the lines. So the linear elements you see here, that's all burned out with a, a butane torch. And all the color on the mesh here is all done with a torch. So it's heat that creates the color changes. So you can kind of get a range between amber, uh, a burgundy, and blue. Uh, the darker well, the gray area, that's the kind of the hottest heat. And then after that, uh, I connect everything together uh, to form the basket with uh, a linesman's pliers. So the, the little edges that I fray off are twisted together. So that kind of constructs the basket shape. And then I go back with a heavier gauge colored wire to accentuate 
uh, that and to re refine it uh, so that it's edge sold. Um. Well, this is wonderful to have you back in Australia again. So thank you. Thank you, you and your wife, for traveling over here and hanging out in Newcastle again. Yeah, well, it's been a great experience. I really appreciate being invited back. Wonderful. We look forward to seeing you again in the next few yeah. years, hopefully. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, welcome to Australia. It's wonderful to have you here. It's amazing to fly all this way. So thank you for coming. I'd like to introduce Daniil Bodine. Right. And thank you so much for being part of this exhibition, Wings. I'm really curious to know about your work. I love your work. It's very uh, quirky. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that it is. No. So the work I did for this show are all about sea anemones and urchins and um, how they've adapted to all the... We live in the Northwest in uh, Whidbey Island and there are a lot of plastics that are coming down in the ocean everywhere. And so I, for some reason I was Googling um, sea urchins and this little thing popped up about how the plastic, some of the plastic things the sea urchin is attached to, and it helps protect him. So that kind of got me started on doing pieces, sea urchins and sea anemones that um, have had plastic come down into their being, and they've mutated to adapt to it so they survive. So anyway, that's what these pieces are, and they're made by coiling, which is one of my favorite techniques to use and um, covered sometimes with papers that I've uh, done surface design on and then embellished with uh, coiled, coil things and little plastic goodies, like these little guys. And, well, all of them, actually. And this one, these are plastic wires that I've collected. The other thing I do is I collect a lot of things and I have a stash that's pretty amazing. In fact, during COVID period, I didn't have to buy anything. I had enough in my stash to work, and I did a whole series just with things that I had at home. And this one, are these little cups here, I got from a uh, wonderful store in Michigan years ago that would have bags of just all kinds of things. And these are from, uh, actually, a car when they were um, making the cars and putting these little caps on top of things to um, mark, mark certain things. So I have bags of those that I re reuse in my artwork. So I'm so pleased to be able to show in this gallery. And thank you, Anne. This has been um, just wonderful to be able to show here. I love Newcastle. It's wonderful to walk around. I'm especially pleased to be here with Lanny, showing with Lanny, and the show that Lanny and Anne produced, or curated, and it's just wonderful to be a part of him. That's it. Yes, Lanny specifically invited you. Uh, okay. He's known you for quite some years, and it's wonderful that you two friends can meet up here in Newcastle. Wilma, well, congratulations on being part of this beautiful show, Lanny Bergner and Wings. As usual, you've created wonderful small pieces of fiber art. Would you like to show us your little beetles that you've created? Sure, thank you. Um, I feel very privileged to be part of this show. There's such amazing works in this show. So these small insignificant little beetles are very happy to be here as well. They are made from little um, scraps of fabric and um, I'm very, very happy to be able to use some of the thousands of little beads I've collected over the years. So um, here they are. When I first met you, you were beading and I noticed you incorporate some of your old familiar techniques in your work over the last 14, 15 years, Wilma. Yes, I, th I think that must be something about getting older. You go back to what you... Um, love and um, become familiar with but it's also uh, the fact that you know that um, you're not going to live long enough to use all your stash so you have to try and use it very very quickly and um, here, here's a little example of that 
um, using some beautiful fabrics that I think I kind of kept um, for later and um, as I said the beads so I've been fascinated with um, beetles because they have two sets of wings the hard elytra and uh, the softer um, flying wings which are protected um, by the hard um, surface of the outer wings so uh, when this exhibition came about called Wings um, it seemed an obvious choice for me. And because I've got you with me I wondered if you could talk to a few of the pieces I would around love you. To. Thank you. I Behind love you to is that. Nicole de Mistre's fly. Yes. So she's once again used a whole lot of found objects and used stitch in a coiled basket. Yes. She's a wonderful basket maker, but also fantastic at using up a lot of um, things she finds around. Absolutely. The beautiful um, use of feathers in this is um, stunning, I think. And the shape. The, sh the shape is organic. Then next to hers is um, a piece called Taking Flight which is Winston Jobling. We met Winston earlier this year when she had a show with us. Yes, with um, all her beautiful handmade papers. Um, and um, uh, this one um, features uh, some feathers as well that have obviously been um, uh, stamped, I think, maybe. Yes, yeah, she's re used um, recycled toner where she's drawn on the both the paper but yes. particularly the feathers and there's that beautiful markings on the feather yes she collects all of her um, plants from around the northern territory and then creates these mm. handmade papers i think this makes it very special because she's using local um, plants and often um, weeds that um, are not wanted or, um, in gardens and other public places so it's beautiful Beautiful work. And the one behind you is a very large felted bowl by Judith M. Daniels. And I've never seen a large bowl like this in felt before. I have to say that um, these bowls, and there are three of them in the exhibition, are amongst my favourite pieces. Um, I am just amazed by the symmetry. Um, I'm not a felter, so I'm pretty um, easily impressed with felt, but um, these are, I think, exceptional. And yes, the, they are. The size as well. And I love the moths <coughs> inside that you've they're been just able to put. They're just really so beautifully done. Mm. And the colours are, are mm. outstanding mm. in all three of them. Mm. Another fibre artist who contributed is Jenny Marie Tempest um, with her Dig It Up piece. Do you want to talk a bit about this one, Wilma? Um, I, I think this is a, a beautiful piece, which um, perhaps on first um, glance, um, not everyone would appreciate the work that's gone into this. This is um, free motion embroidery on the sewing machine. Um, and it um, has so many um, beautiful elements in it. The um, lavender, um, the leaves, um, our, um, our fabric um, and all the little butterflies um, are fabric and uh, I think this is um, just a, a lovely touch, this little spade. Um. And then behind you is one of uh, Susie Vickering's Rare Bird series. Yes. She does a lot of um, interesting work around puppet making and embroidery found objects. And um, I think um, this whole Rare Bird series in this exhibition, um, besides just being colourful and whimsical, and um, I think some of the other ones that are interactive pieces, um, are just so much fun. But also, I think they tell a really serious story about the endangered species of birds. And Wilma, the one next to it um, is called Bees and Wings by Jane Dickinson. Yes. She's a UK artist who's recycled Thai silk with a lot of applique. That's a very delicate piece, isn't it? It is a beautiful piece. It's, um, it's applique and I think 
the fabrics are just exquisite and um, such a great choice. So um, congratulations, Jane, on this really beautiful piece. And um, yeah, I, I just like the idea of the bee in, in, as the feature, but all those wings. Over your shoulder is a piece of artwork from Jan Clark, who's very well known to this gallery. And obviously this is called Dragonflies. This has been a crowd favourite, I think. Everyone in, who comes into the gallery just goes, ooh, ah. Um, so, well done, Jan. And um, we know that Jan um, has had such um, an interest in insects um, for, for a very long time. And um, we love the sparkle gold. And um, this is such a joyful, um, happy, wondrous piece of work. Jan loves bling. So if you've ever done yes. a workshop with Jan, you will also fall in love with bling. She's working in containers. Working in containers. Um, and this is the lid for this beautiful box, which holds the letter to the Prime Minister. Three beautiful um, pieces by Gillian Cooley, Flight Palm. These um, are we, uh, weaving with uh, natural fibres. So beautiful. She's done a lot of rib construction. Rib you know, construction, well. yes. Mm. Natural um, willow um, and coral pea vine and Bangalore palm inflorescence as well. And I think the it says passion fruit vine too. So these are all curly, spirally bits. Yeah, it's so delicate. How beautiful piece this is by um, our local acclaimed artist Meredith Warner, who works with machine stitching on Solvi. Um, this is a very, very special piece and very special um, to all of the local art enthusiasts as well, because it um, depicts 12 different bee wings of our native bees that are found um, here in the Hunter. And uh, how special is that? Not only is it beautiful, but it has such a significant meaning. And then the piece over your right shoulder is by Alison Midlow Marsden, and yes. it's called Less Apart and More Apart. And how, how beautiful this is as well. Um, Alison is quite well known to us because she's been um, here in the gallery and done a number of workshops and will be back very soon to do a workshop and her, um, I think, signature is um, manipulating this um, amazing um, stainless steel fabric, not only with heat to colour it, but also the manipulation um, with uh, stitching. Um, and here she's um, stitched with bronze wire and um, to create this just amazing 3D sculpted piece. And then uh, new to the gallery is Carolyn Dance with uh, the, her piece called Lace Wing. She's a friend, of course, with Gillian. I, um, I really love this piece too. Um, not only because I think lace wings are, uh, are very uh, beneficial to our environment because they eat sort of some nasty bugs, but just this um, whole shape and um, the use of uh, the the string is actually handmade, and um, she, um, Carolyn's done a looping stitch to create um, this beautiful pattern on the wing itself. It's a beautiful piece, isn't it? It is a beautiful piece. Then, uh, lastly, we have a lovely piece that's also new to the gallery, is Rach Gooden. I just love this piece. It is so delicate. It's exquisite. Um, it um, is a, a stump work um, a piece, and um, it's you, you can't even see the tiny little stitches. But um, you, if you look very, very closely, tiny stitches, tiny beads, and. The, there's symmetry here, which um, 
is not easy uh, to do when you're um, hand stitching, but here it is, it's just beautiful. I just uh, love to work bees and um, the word endangered is embroidered there to give the message um, and um, I think this is very special. These are all uh, found um, objects, the eyes and the frame, um, but uh, such beautiful this is an excellent exhibition to see a range of fiber art techniques that have looked at the um, topic of wings. Absolutely. I, I think um, what, what a great theme too because it allowed um, so many different artists to respond in their own special way. And of course they were responding to Lanny's Lanny wings work, here. Yeah. Thank you Wilma for giving us an overview of Wings, Lanny, Beg, Bergner and his friends. Thank you. Well, I hope to see you in the gallery soon um, for this really, really amazing exhibition.